There's a couple different ways to approach this. One way to do this is to make a table uh, in terms of uh, the time. Okay, so T you could think of as like time, and the X is really the horizontal direction, the Y is the uh, vertical direction, and what we're doing is we're splitting those equations into, into two parts. And basically, uh, as you can see, as time is increasing, we wanna see what happens to, say for example, the position of this uh, particle or object, right? So let's just take like an example. So say for example, we put zero in for T, we get zero minus one is negative one, but if we put zero in for t into the second equation, we're getting two times zero, zero plus one is one. Okay, and if we put one in, one minus one is a zero. Let's see, two minus one is one, three minus one is two, and four minus one is three. And then for y, let's see if we put in uh, one, we're getting two plus one is three, two times two is four plus one is five, two times three is six plus one is seven, and nine, right? Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna plot these uh, points, okay, on our coordinate axis, and you can see negative one, one, okay, this is gonna be right here, zero, three, that's gonna be right here, uh, one, five, that's gonna be right here, uh, two, seven is kinda going off our graph a little bit like that. So now when you, when you graph these parametric curves, we're so used to when we draw, like, for example, a graph, we put, like, arrows to show that it, like, keeps going in both directions. You don't actually do that with parametric, uh, graphs, you just draw the, the curve or the line or whatever the shape of the graph is. And then what you wanna do is you wanna draw direction arrows. And what that means is that with increasing values of t, which direction is this object going? So you can see as t is increasing, I was plotting my points going up to the right like this. So what I would do is I would just draw some arrows indicating the direction that the object is traveling. Now, the other way, Okay, so this one, I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna jump right into eliminating the parameter first, okay, as opposed to maybe making a table first. So the one thing that I want you to remember is the Pythagorean trig identity. So remember, Pythagorean trig identity looks like this, right? Sine squared plus cosine squared equals one, right? So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna rewrite these two equations um, solving for cosine or sine. So if we do that, here you can see cosine of theta equals x divided by two, just dividing both sides by two. And then what we can do then is substitute that in place of cosine here. So that's x over two squared, because cosine is squared. This one we're gonna add one and divide by three. So this is actually y plus one divided by three uh, equals sine theta. So we're gonna put that in here. So that's y plus one over three squared. Okay, and that equals one. So now you can see what we've done is we've uh, eliminated the parameter. We've got everything in terms of uh, just x's and y's. We've got rid of the theta. And if we simplify a little bit further here, what you can see is this is gonna be, uh, I'm gonna rewrite this a little bit, additions commutative. So I'm gonna write this as x squared over four. This one I'm gonna write as one, y plus one squared over nine equals one. Now does anyone recognize uh, the equation, the uh, graph that this equation represents? Well, you can see that it's a ellipse, right? An ellipse. And the center of the ellipse over here is gonna be at zero, negative one. So that's gonna be zero down one. And you can see we're going uh, two in the x direction, square root of four is two. We're going three in the y direction. Okay, one, two, three. Let's see, one, two, three, and one, two, three. So now you can see that this is an ellipse. Okay, a little bit more elongated in the vertical direction, the y direction. But now let's go ahead and get an idea which way is this uh, particle or object traveling with increasing values of theta. So let's put in zero. So if we put in zero, what do we get? Well, we get cosine of zero is one, right? From our unit circle times two, which is two. Okay, and then say for example, we put in 90. What's the cosine of 90? That's zero times two is still zero. And then for y, let's say we put in zero, sine of zero is zero times three is zero minus one is negative one. And if we put in 90, the sine of 90 we know is one times three is three minus one is two. Okay, so now if we plot these points, you can see we're starting at two negative one, that's this point right here. And then as theta goes to 90 degrees, we're gonna be at the point zero two, that's this point here. So you can see as theta is getting larger and larger, we're going in this counterclockwise direction. So that's our graph, it's an ellipse. But what's interesting about the parametric equations, again, is that we have an orientation, we have a direction with increasing values of our parameter. In this case, the parameter was theta. In these other two examples, our parameter was t. Perhaps t stands for time. And so that's a, a brief overview of how to solve and, and graph some of these parametric 
uh, equations. I hope you liked the video. Uh, subscribe to the channel. Check out more math tutoring videos on my YouTube channel, Mario's Math Tutoring. And I look forward to helping you in the future videos. I'll talk to you soon.